thank you so much, Avi, for this contribution. And th there was even other business place down at Kings Bay. No, there was a man that named Mr. Ramsey. He had a little. He had a little. Um, yeah. Was he it a restaurant? A little place there, where, a mm -hmm. restaurant with rooms. You mm -hmm. know, where you could have pick up your girlfriend and instead of carrying she in the bush. I'm talking. Who knows what I'm? T he, he, he used to run a, a nice little. Well, it's a guest house. We call it what a brothel or whatever it was. I ain't lying on anybody. I was young, and who knows? I went there and sit once or twice, so I know what I'm talking about. Kings Bay is now dead. So we have a dead stretch from Delaford straight going up the hill to Speyside because what we used to have as a lookout, it ain't no thing that going on up there now. They should have. People should have be up there with restaurants and selling food and stuff. Absolutely. Food and art craft. We need to get back to the old art craft of using using sweet pines and tie-dye. Mm. Yes. Who wants to see these different things? Any other thing you're giving them right now, they have in America, they have in Europe. They don't want to come someplace different for the same things. So we have to entice them. And we yes. have to for all the skills. Thank you, Avi. I know you went over your, our six minutes, but you answered more than once. So now Mary is here. So let's welcome Mary Dates. Hello. <laughs> Mary, where are you? Oh, I'm here. Because you need some you light. I ain't seen you good at all. I'm hearing you very good, but I, I don't know if, the, if you have to sit a little higher and face the light. Okay, let's face try that. Welcome, Mary, everybody. Welcome, Mary Dates Mitchell. Welcome, and Mary. Fordian. So now we're going to move now to um, fix yourself, Mary. We're going to move now to Joanne. So, Joanne, yeah. you will pick up. Um, just to, there's so many things to speak about with regards to Kings Bay, um, Kings Bay Waterfall. I think the waterfall, Avi, you might not remember that, but they Mary, used to use it. Sit, um, higher, sit higher, Mary. An area to baptize people because they had a okay. really big pool there. Mm -hmm. I, I think the pool is there. It's not as big as you can see. The water levels have decreased. But then when you think about the way we slash and burn in Tobago, um, they clean the land, they cut down trees, they let the fire loose. As you know, we forestry encourages rainfall. So... If you are going to cut your trees, you okay. are not going to have the um, rainfall that you want. And so that can be part of the problem that we are having. Erosions will take place because you're, you're cutting trees, you're burning the land. Initially, it's good for the, the soil, but after the rainfall comes, then it takes away the nutrients in the soil. And, you know, the rivers along the way over the years, they were taking out gravel and stone and then cutting into the bank. If you look at where I live in, um, Louis Dow local road. That happened. We used to have lots of land there. You had lots of guava trees where we, we had our pig pens and things like that. But then when they started cutting, because people were selling their gravel to Harry, that guy who lived in Mount St. George, right? He had a, yes. um, a plant. And so when he started to cut, he didn't, he was thinking money. I remember I used to say to my dad and, you know, Look, what they're doing, they're going to erode the land, you know, and, and destroy it. So they were, he used to cut the bank and take out the, the gravel that was in the soil. And, you know, when the river coming from Fox and taking all those corners, then it took away so much of the land. And I think that kind of thing, maybe they're not so much digging out those things today. But as you can see, Tobago, the, the coast and everywhere is disappearing fast. Um, just to talk about Della Ford. I think De La Ford was such a vibrant community. In terms of the market that uh, Avi, when Avi spoke about it, as I was part, um, part and parcel of that market, because we not only sold meat, we did um, vegetables, and there were many families. That's where they, they made their money. People were going to um, Trinidad and trafficking, buying their goods and coming back and selling it. You know, Erica Orr, I think she may be out there somewhere, who you, was one of the people and many, many others and including our family, we see and Cherry and your mom and everybody used to do that. Yes, they used so to be trafficking. I think, 
in the trafficking and and so the market was so vibrant people would come from everywhere saturday morning friday evening you know to carry on that market then you know we used to have the like phone had a steel band tent and that was um i think it was called wasa something i can't remember it's such a long time ago and you know you had we had a cultural we had cultural activities there they would take part in best village so you had people like um wendy nicholson wendy i always think about wendy to this day because she's got so much a talent so gifted with her music and dance and then we have barry joey ricky john i the guys i could remember floyd floyd what was his name floyd was some dong versus up you know floyd, floyd used to wolf drum with them wolf? as well yeah floyd wolf so they all used to drum you always see them in the concerts and those are the things and then to to touch on the things like the the um arts that we used to do at this de la Folle rc school they used to do a lot of classes you yes. did icing cake I, I learned a lot of stuff there um people were doing school pine work and you know I, I remember coming you remember miss or miss anora anora yeah so you know i when i come i came to new york um back in 2018 and i was in um um what do you call it that store what do you call that store in um in manhattan that pretty famous store i can't remember it now macy's in Macy's, I looked at stuff that was coming in from Haiti, similar things that they made and they was being sold for a lot of money in Macy's. And that brought me back to um, what we used to do in Tobago because we also used to, you know, people, the blind people in Tobago used to make baskets and stuff mm -hmm. at Fairfield. Complex. Yes. So, you know, these are, if Farley and anybody out there listening to, to all of us, we need to encourage our young people in all of our villages to know what Tobago used to do and to try and bring it back. So it, it, it takes the effort of not only the people who are in government, but people who are within the diaspora, because I just want to highlight something that, that's happening in, in Ghana, where you see um, the present president, he came to America, he, I think he went to Trinidad and Tobago and everywhere, encouraging people to come from the diaspora to help to build and develop Ghana. Let me tell you, all the young people are returning from all over the world and they're doing wonderful works. They're being encouraged to do that. And yes. I think this is something that the government needs to do. You know, the situation that's taking place with the, the Thai situation in Tobago and nothing seems to be happening. Yes. Um, you still have Definitely. one party who... I, I sometimes see evidence of arrogancy and some on, part, on the part of, of some of them. I'm not here for one yes. or the other. But one thing I want to say is, um, I kind of digress, is that we are to be Gonians. You have, wh whether or not one person wants to become the chief sec, the other one wants to become um, the presiding officer, they can decide between you. One decide to take the chief sec role, the other one decided to take the um, um, the presiding officer role. You understand? And decide to work together. So let us get the Tobago that yes. we want to have. You understand? The decision is not just between uh, the two parties or our leader and whoever else is involved in that. Too many things are at stake in Tobago today. And I just want to run through quickly some of the stuff that we had in Delaford. Like, for example... We have Louisville nurseries that were producing all the plants that we needed to plant, like tomatoes and other things, oranges. And, and I think they don't do much of that now. Then you have Louisville demonstration station, which would demonstrate the crops and demonstrate the animals that they wanted you to sort of rear. And, that, and, and you know, you, you also have a marketing board, which is virtually about to disappear, I think. I, I don't understand how... You know, you have marketing board. The role of marketing board should be Louis our demonstration is there. It's growing stuff. It should be selling some of the good stuff. Marketing it. board. And then for the people around in the in the very in the villages, especially on countryside, what they should be encouraging them to grow crops and buy those things from them, get those things exported out. You know, when yes. I'm down the road, I see all the goods from Dominica. Jamaica, Grenada, wherever. Nothing is coming in from Trinidad and Tobago. So it, it takes 
government, House of Assembly, you need to train your people, send them abroad if you have to, to, to we need to bring in new ideas or new blood to get what we want to get. It just can't just happen that um, we're going to go anywhere with the kind of old systems that we have. You have people that were educated in, in Ekiaf. Um, if they need to be trained all the time, like a nurse here, you have to do mandatory training. So really and truly, they should be having mandatory training in every aspect of, of um, employment or in, in, in the various sectors in Tobago so that they can keep abreast and know how things should be run. Because it's just a shame to see the way Tobago is falling apart and falling into the wrong hands. So, um, yeah, just to say, I'm going to briefly say we had a village league that we used to have. All the, the, the different streets would come together. We'll do netball, football. That was the kind of community effort. We also had the wider footballs with the ball stars. If anybody remember ball stars, my dad used to run the Unity Cricket Club. Um, you know, um, hmm. what else is there to say? Our harvest as well. The harvest, which was integral for the village, but also the Lafford um, RC did the Easter Sunday harvest with the Sunday punch board and all kind of games, you know. Um, I think some people may say that was old time because young people like to say that was then, that was then. But it's so important to have your traditions. Like I want to just quote the lady that just died. We are Cicely out of your six minutes. Six minutes. Just one second, one minute. <laughs> Cecily Tyson said something just before she died. Remember who you are. Remember where you come from. Remember your roots. And if we don't have roots, you know, you're a tree. We are trees. Yeah, we told you if the tree doesn't stand. have its foundation, we're falling. And I think we are going down. So people, let's build it back together. We are here. We're ready. When you want us, we'll be there. Amen. That's my piece. Well, to the new management and the new government that we're supposed to have, the new governance in the THA, these mm -hmm. are two great contributions that you must listen to. I know many people, and Cicely Tyson, she was born and raised in Nevis in the Caribbean. So that's a Caribbean thought, a Caribbean message, and it will go well in Trinidad and Tobago as well. So yeah, I think she was born in Harlem, but her parents are from Nevis. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yes, yes. She was born in Harlem. She was born in Harlem. Well, yeah. with Caribbean roots. So, but she is Caribbean roots. Yes. So this is a yeah. this is a deep Caribbean thoughtful, thoughtful mm -hmm. and should be reinforced. Hmm. So now here we have our sister, our pastor, our Dr. Wendy Lewis. And she's about Wendy Mitchell Lewis. I have to be specific on Mitchell because yeah. that's her. That's a birth name, and that's the name that Glamorgan people would recognize and deface Amen. and what she has to say right now. Well, you know, we, we are running close to an hour, and we're only halfway there, so we, we wouldn't be able to ask all the questions that we had planned for today. Hmm. But Sister Wendy, you give us your yeah. take. Well, um, uh, Mama Coco, today is a day of love, eh? Today yes. is Valentine's Day. And I think in, in, in light of everything that we're talking about, it actually comes down to love. All love, come down to love, yes. Love of country, love of self, love of tradition. Um, and, it, and, and, and it really, if we each were to do our parts, we wouldn't have to worry too much about whether the opposition or the ruling party does what they have to do. Because we would have taken our bit and done what we would have supposed to do to bring about the changes. I remember growing up, um, you know, there was a love for each other in the village. Hmm. Whether and, 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 and I was listening to Avi and I was saying, funny enough that she said exactly the same thing that I was going to say. I am a byproduct of my village. My village raised me. I, I told you my history already. I never knew my mom. My mom died when I was six months old, never knew my dad. So I had my grandmother and everybody knew her in the village of Glamorgan as Miss Iris. Um, so she raised me, but my village, we didn't have electricity. So I had to go to a villager's, uh, a fellow villager's house to do homework sometime late at nights. 
or to use, you know, whatever resources. Um, it was the village mentality that in the days that we didn't have enough, you know, to eat, that mm. the village fishermen would come up and you would hear them even while they are selling their fish, you know, with the horns blowing and everything, but they would stand and they would make sure that we had enough fish to eat. There mm. was people at the village that baked and sent over bread and sweet bread and cakes. So I, I am a product of my village. Everybody was able to correct me. I didn't like it at all, but I thank God for it. <laughs> I had to call people auntie and uncle who ain't even my auntie and uncle, but I thank God for it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, but, but another thing though, is that I remember um, if we were going to wash down by the river, that, that love for each other. One person brought saltfish buljol, another one bought juice or morbi. Uh, uh, and we're coming from different households, if you get like, <clears throat> I mean, and, and, and it was the oneness, that love for each other. Somebody else make dumpling, you know, somebody boil some green banana, but we all were heading down to Richmond River to go wash our clothes. So if I didn't have enough soap, there was somebody there that say, here is some soap. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then when we wash and put the clothes on the, on the grass to dry, we play. And you, you all remember that kind of a thing. Yes. What, mm -hmm. was, what was, again, important to me was um, the uh, independence of the village. Uh, let me explain myself. I didn't like growing up very much. Uh, because my grandmother had two acres of land that me and she had to take care of. It mm. was with cocoa, banana, every fruit that you could think of. Uh, but what I hated the most was having to pick the cocoa, bag it, bring it all under one tree, bag it, and then put the bags on my shoulder and take it down to fermentary. Okay? Mm. Now, besides, I had to weigh it, and then I get paid for how much cents per pound of cocoa. But that was the resources that was in my village. Besides that, I had traffickers that would come and they would buy um, bananas from us, um, oranges from us, sapodillas, pomsite, whatever, that they would come down and, and take that and take it down to the market in town to sell because that's what we were doing. We were producing stuff. So there was an independence in the village that was taking place. On top of that now, we had the core dependence of the villages working together. So I heard Avi talk about the fresh beef. We co-depended on Roxboro because we would leave Glamorgan on a Saturday morning and go up to the abattoir in Roxboro to get our fresh Friday, beef. Friday, was Friday you guys? Friday, used to right? Yes. Yeah. Right, and go up Friday to get to our the fresh abattoir beef. and Saturday mm -hmm. to the market, but you guys were Adventists. Right, there you go. So, yeah. so we, we had to, there was that interdependence of the villages working together. We talked about the harvest times. You couldn't have a harvest without the other villages coming to support your harvest. Harvest wasn't mm -hmm. just for Dallaford alone or for Roxborough alone. People from Pembroke, Goldsboro, Goodwood, everybody coming and going up to that place, wherever that, and that shows our co-dependence on each other. You had your finger up, Mama Coco? No, 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 no. Someone was doing something. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, so I think we have lost that. I went back to my village recently, and what I saw, I was horrified at what I saw. And and Tell I tell them the name of your village again. My village is Glamorgan. I am from George Street, Glamorgan, Tobago. Hey. I am the first house born in on George Street, right there by the first lamppost. That's where I grew up. There's not a house there anymore, but that's where I was raised. And, and I, I go back home and, of course, I don't really know too many of them except the older heads. Like I see some of them here, Wendy John and some others, Carol Walcott, Ann Walcott. Those are my, you know, peers. Um, but I go and one of the things that struck me was I'm seeing these young boys and I'm asking them, who's your father? Who's your mother? I know their mothers. I know their dads. But they are seated at the side of the road um, drinking white rum in the middle of the day. Now, now, something is diabolically wrong with that because I'm saying, okay, there must be something that we can do to mm -hmm. help these, uh, young people that are going through whatever this might be. There has to be some initiatives that we can put forth. I spoke with somebody that belonged to um, the uh, village 
counsel the other day. And in my passion, I'm explaining myself. I reached out to some of the um, Tobigonians that are living abroad here from Glamorgan, my fellow villagers. And I said, this is what I want to do because I'm seeing that there is a need here. And again, let me reiterate, it comes back to love. If we don't see them as our children, if we don't see mm -hmm. them as, you know, the future and we just look past them, watch them drinking rum by the side of the road or smoking weed or getting into trouble and ended up robbing people or raping somebody, God forbid. And we just say, look at you, you're what this go. I don't go. It has to be more than that. Yes. There has to be something. And, 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 and it comes down right back to God is love. It has to be love. It is mm -hmm. love that will keep the politicians from robbing the poor. What, what, yes. what it, if you know, if we follow this book called the Bible, everything would fall into its rightful place. And I'm not trying to be a preacher here, but I'm so you know, I was raised by the book, you yes. know, and I've been trying to follow the book for these latter years of my life. I went astray from the book for a minute, but I, I'm right back with the book because I'm seeing that the book makes difference, makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Follow what God says in the book: love for humanity, love for each other. Love for the poor, love for the downtrodden, visit the sick, clothe the naked, feed the hungry. We would be, the Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And if the nation or the politicians or the leaders are not following the book and are not living or doing right by the book, then of course the country will suffer. So I call in my, go ahead. Like one of the first rule, thou shall not steal. Yes. There you go. There you go. Anyhow you look at it. I mean, we knew about it when I, I, I remember the days when I used to climb up on somebody, um, you know, orange tree or the or the plum, or the, tree. The, 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 the plum tree at at what's now? I, I'll go on and Mr. John Johnny Mac plum tree to teeth plum. I, I oh god, I'm not sure man you know, but <laughs> the, plum, the, plum, the plum branch break. I you know what I take the plum branch and carry it home and plant it. And it make it, it give me a plum tree. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes, it <Yeah. does. laughs> But I'm just saying all of this in my passion. I said, listen, what can we do for the village? Because I'm not happy with what I'm seeing here. I said, okay, we have, um, we have a, a village council. We have a, a community center. Just give me a room. I, I am working with organizations across the world where we plant libraries in uh, low-income neighborhoods all across the world in different countries. Give me a give me a room. Let us plant a, 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 a library there. Why do I want to plant a library? Not to put my name there and say Pastor Wendy, you know, or doctor, whatever. No, 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 no. I realized that I I came out of my village where I had to travel to town mm -hmm. 13 miles away to Scarborough to get to the library. Hey. And I knew there are people even in the pandemic, children who don't have electricity, who don't have resources. So let's plant the library. Let the library be there for everybody from Roxborough want to come down or from Goodwood want to come up. It doesn't make a difference. It is for us and by us. I said on top of that, if there are unwed mothers in the village, look here, hire them. Run an after-school care program. Put them to work. They can work. They don't need to be listening to the government to fix hey. the issue. I said, on top of that, we have a beach in Glamorgan. Hey, let's get a website for Glamorgan. And this is a this is a model. What for a every beach. beach? Tell them about that beach. Oh my god. Richmond Beach is one of the most beautiful beaches if it's well taken care of. So get these young boys from off the street, get them off alcohol, get them off drugs, hire them, train them as tourists, uh, as 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 um tour guides, them, tour guides, put them there. I heard Avi talk about it. I heard, um, I think it was Joanne that mentioned it also about the baskets. There's people in the village that can make baskets. I Listen, I lived in Jamaica for close to 10 years. And on the roadside, you see everybody who could cook, everybody and then then then. And it yes. didn't matter who was 10 of them next to each other. One person selling curry goat, the next one selling soup, the next one selling something else. Okay? Now, use those young men in the village Clear the path to the beach. That Preach. is a tourist destination. Okay? Fomentary is a tourist destination. Get it together. Show people how the, 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 the coffee is made from start to finish. Yeah? That's Preach. a tourist destination. 
Okay, clean up the place. I said, get a website for the village. You target your audience. There's a guest house in Glamorgan. There's a, a famous bakery with Sherma and, and the others that makes there that everybody comes to. Market it. Go on the website. Put your little... Um, your little uh, uh, snack bags together and sell it on the internet. For God's sake, put some tulum, some beneball, some, some sugar Preach. cake, package yeah. it and put it on the website and let it bring in something to the economy. Okay. I said, on top of that, for God's sakes, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Let employ the seamstress and anybody who can sew, let them make masks and sell them. they you have God said to Moses, What do you have in your hand? I'm sorry, what I'm so you have? Hello, hello, preach. Please forgive me. Three but more minutes for you, and then we move to Mary. And just blame everything on the politician. And can I go into politics for a minute, Mama Coco? Yes. I don't want to hear nobody's voice who did not vote talk about the prime minister, the opposition, or anybody. If you didn't vote, shut your mouth. Hey. Because you vote is your voice. Exactly. If you want to put somebody else in there to get the job done, go and vote. Other than that, shut your mouth. Nobody wants to hear you. Because Preach. you are out of control. Stop blaming the prime minister. Stop blaming the opposition. Stop blaming everybody else. Because when I look on this program and I see what is the, the wealth of education and these mm -hmm. young breed of people that are coming out of my island, I am so proud. Hey. Mm -hmm. my, the Jamaicans have a saying. They, they say, me glad bag boss. <laughs> me glad bag boss. They're <laughs> over happy. They're over happy. So happy. Yes. So proud. I say, oh my God, is this what they're producing with this new breed of, 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 of young people that are coming? And they know their stuff. They're not coming. And they will do. They will deliver. Yeah, uh, they will deliver. They will deliver. They are, they are, they are, they are powered up and they're fired up and ready to go. But they can't do it unless you vote them into power. And don't, don't, don't come and give people because you know we's a bunch of people that like to talk. We love talk. We have degrees in talkative. Yeah, yeah? <laughs> we can talk, but when it comes to putting your finger where it comes the most, we we we, we mama guide people all the time with remote. You understand? And then when it comes to the real thing to go and vote, nobody and say nothing. You, you stay home. And so the other party win by default. We, listen, we just went through immigra uh, uh, um, um, elections here in Georgia where I live. And you want to know something? We made sure that it was Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff that we put in there by the vote because we were tired of the Republicans. Well, darling, you're preaching here. Yes. Okay, we are preaching here. No, you, no, we can't even, Sister Wendy, Dr. Pastor, can you promise us that you're going to be back next Sunday? Oh, yes, sure. Because uh, we I, have. I love at the, at the, at the, at the invitation. Yes. So we're going to continue this show here, but now we're going to hear from our sister. But before we hear from you, my dear Mary, you have to sit a little higher for me. We are not seeing your face enough. Oh. And you have a very strong uh -huh. question coming your way from me. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not angling myself properly? I don't know. No, you're not angling. Don't, don't, don't get nervous. The other way. You have to come there. The yes. there you go. Center yourself mm -hmm. and look at the camera. Because Wendy, you were born, I say in Wendy, hey, Sister Wendy, <laughs> glory to God. We want to thank you for this. For this, for this auspicious moment that you you really bring it home, you 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 really did what you supposed to do here, along with Sister Joanne Melville, you guys bring it in deep, along with Avi, you guys make sure that you really visit the show today and you bring it on. You put people to think and to wonder, how uh, are the people who live in abroad? Seen Tobago from a different angle. Yes. Yes. To yes. you who live there and, and should go yes, and vote. Yes, I believe we are. We are. Yes, so, we are. Mm -hmm. So, Sister Mary, a little higher. Bring your pull. What, what are you on today? Your your iPad or your phone? I'm on my um tablet. Tablet? Well, bring the tablet. Yes. But you have to center yourself now. 
nicely. Yes. So your question will be, although you were born there in Dallas Ford, you spent mm -hmm. your adult years in Lambeau, did you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Tell us, about, tell us about Lambeau then and now mm -hmm. and what you mm -hmm. want to say. Lambeau then and now. <laughs> yes. Um, when, when I go home, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because um, Lambeau, and I have to say PNM because PNM have Lambo as their stronghold and they've neglected Lambo. Lambo is being taken by the sea. And they, they are doing nothing to stop it. When you walk through Lambo village, you see all the young men, as everybody said, sitting around doing nothing. Many of the representatives were Lambo born people. People who grew up among them. And when you ask these young men and stuff, what, what they're looking at, what they want, they want a five days here, they want a five days there. They have no action plan for the future. Hmm. They see this the here and now. I must also say that there are a lot of activities. There are a lot of white and other things that have been provided into Tobago. 200 of them will go and register on a course. And by the time the course is ended, you don't even have five to have a graduation ceremony. So even though we want to say the politicians, these people have to take it upon themselves. We have to love ourselves, as Pastor Wendy said, and want better for ourselves. And if we don't want it for ourselves, we need to do it for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren that come in. Okay, Lambo used to be such a beautiful lot of football, cricket, everything, because my brother was an average cricket player. Still to this day, he migrated to the UK, and he still plays cricket at the age of 58. Hey. And always getting sportsman of the year. Cricket mm. of the year, it is club. You understand? It's something that is passionate in the village, but there's nothing in the village for the young people to do. And that is very sad. When all the shops that were uh, Lambo on the on the Milford Road where we lived, we had shop on the left, shop on the right, and you walk through there now, there is nothing. All breakdown mm. building, nothing there. You understand? And there is no injection of no resources into all these areas that these people go up and beg you to vote for, and they will do this, they will do that, and there is nothing done. So it is, it is so sad, but as I said mm. before, the young people need to access the things that are available in Tobago, because they are. They are. A lot of people go to schools, go to courses, do courses in Tobago, and get their degrees and things like that. But again, it's finding a job for them, because they all are given two-year contracts. Two we are going to allow Mary to speak permit. a little here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mary. Tell us, tell us now about the sea coast. Tell us about do you have the sea coast there yourself? Thing, um, yes, the sea coast. When I when they started to dredge the deep water harbor in Scarborough, I remember my mother and they protesting about it because our house was on the sea coast going along Lambo, and um, they there were a lot of protests. Nothing's been done. Every government that has run the THA has promised. Has mm. promised and has promised. The sea is taking all the land, all the houses. I think our house and maybe one or two others are still functional on that sea coast. But it's, it's shifting it away. And no one, they come and they look at it and they say, mm, oh, we can't do much because it will cost too much. But the mm. 1.2 billion that is unaccounted for would have done a great job to save those land in Lambo. Say that again so people can hear. <laughs> Yes, the <laughs> 1.2 billion that is unaccounted for. It could have done a lot to stop the sea from reclaiming the land. In Lambo. So, in Lambo. The whole coast of Lambo is gone. All Scarborough. Like I used to walk from Lambo to yeah. Scarborough Methodist, mm -hmm. from Scarborough Methodist back down. We're yeah. walking all on the beach coming down. That's right. You Not can't anymore. do that. Scarborough yes. is being claimed by the sea. Yeah. Because yes. when, when Junior when, Secondary, you cannot walk behind there. That's they have right. moved the arm, um, they have moved the licensing office. All of these because 
We used to walk. We used to, mommy used to give us money to take the bus. We buy sweetie. We take off the shoe. We tie the lace around the neck and we walk on the coast and go home. Not you now. can't do that. You see her Lord. taking it all. So right. we are losing a lot of our land, a lot of our heritage because Carol Sex soon will have to be relocated. Ah. Yeah. 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 And Shaw Park, Shaw Park. Yeah. But Shaw Park, you, there's nowhere there that you could really do much activities. Now you used to have nice cricket tournaments and things up in Shaw Park. Schools, what about our country schools? Yeah. Must go Shaw Park. Mm -hmm. Shopping you used to go down shop back to do your sports. To do sports. You had your you sports walk. days there. No, they built up that building there that is the cultural complex, and that's it. So My it's, it's these Mary. investments that are missing. Missing. Go ahead, Wendy. I I I I I would reiterate my point. If <laughs> if we can sit here and talk about how many billions are missing then you've got to get these people out of office by voting them out. Not voting for it to be just a margin, and I'm not sanctioning anybody. I'm just saying that this is the way that, you know, elections are run. If somebody is not doing the job that we want them to do, how many years now? Why would you get up off of your blessed assurance and go vote? <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a spiritual curse. A pain. That's a Christian you know, curse when I there. speak to my relatives and my friends in Tobago, they will tell me, well, everybody about God and thief anyway. So then nobody no. not tell me about That's people and thief. Right because there. everybody does thief, everybody does support a family. I said, well, okay, if you put somebody else there and they've done the same, with, you get rid of them. Same you know the power is set with the citizens. Yes, the country. it's in your hands. Not That's with right. the government. The government don't have no power. Yes. You give them the power. And That's if right. they, you, work they go there, they're not doing what they're supposed to do for you, the citizens of the country. You have your democratic right to vote them out. Vote yeah. them Amen. out. Don't That's hold on to them. Don't hold on to them. Don't hold on to mediocrity. Don't Sister hold on Joanne, to substance. Don't, don't hold on to that. You get rid of them and put somebody else. They misbehave. You get rid of them. Bye. That's the market. You know, um, we were talking about how so many of the young people are stagnated, sitting everywhere. They haven't, you know, they have to have an initiative as well. But it, it's a collective effort. You need, you know, need government. You need the church. You need Correct. the village council. You need the diaspora. We bring fresh ideas as well to yes. try and help them. And you also want to need investment. And this is where central government is responsible to shelve some of the um, ministries onto Tobago. So you don't want all the ministries. We are Trinidad and Tobago. So yes. we want to see a, a branch of a university or um, a, the agricultural uh, bit of the university in Tobago or the part of the nursing bit in Tobago, or the marketing bit or something. So we are Trinidad and Tobago. And if we are, um, what I say, together we stand, however that goes. Together we are stand. Together we are We can't have everything in the state. It's killing Tobago. That yes. is what's killing Tobago. And then Tobago, to be Tobagoans look at, okay, people get on a boat. The people will hate me for saying that, I think. And then you go to Trinidad, and shop because he mm. said it's cheaper mm. in Trinidad. Yeah. But we are killing our society. We're yes. killing our business community. How is it going to be uh, grow? And and central government has a responsibility because we are Trinidad and Tobago. The the goods should be priced at the same. What is the point of one being priced out that way? It should be the mm -hmm. same. We are Trinidad and Tobago. Like if right. you're in, in in England and you go a different part of England. You know, or even Scotland, how much different is it really? You know, yes. so it should be the same in order to help Tobago to grow. But right. it's not in the best interest of all these business people. And Tobago at fault to because they are taking themselves to go and support um, the business places in Trinidad. We have to support what we have. What did we used to do before that? What did we do and how did we all grow up in Tobago with whatever little we were our parents were doing and we have all done well and gone wherever we've gone or some of us are still there so it's all done to all of us and central government need to start 
shuffling some of the ministries and other things into Tobago to help create more employment so that we don't have that brain drain as well. You know, we're losing all our people. We, we, we need, the government person. need to stop, let it be Trinidad. We have baby. one. There's an and, and let it always be an and. There was a Copalani's in Tobago. There was Copalani's in Trinidad. There was Bata in Tobago. There was Bata in Trinidad. Why is it now that there is not the same one that so that the prices will remain the same for everybody so that Tobago people will not be exploited by the businessmen that are there. They are saying, oh, we have to go to Trinidad for the stock. We have to pay to bring them up. So if the government puts legislation in place, so if you have one store in Trinidad, you have one in Tobago and everything will end up being the same price for everybody. But people have to let the little bit of money they have go a long way. So that's why they go to Trinidad. That's why they end up going to Trinidad. Well, Mary Dates, we, <laughs> this is a real powerful, strong show. And um, you ladies were chosen. This wasn't haphazardly. And uh, I'm so happy and proud of this team. But we have a final question here. Joanne, Mary, and Pastor, Dr. Wendy, and mm -hmm. Avi. I'll leave out Avi, yeah? <laughs> Mm -hmm. what, yes. role should, what role should the church I didn't want to ask this question today because this question is deep but this question was designed mainly for Dr. Mm -hmm. Pastor Wendy what role should the church and other place of worship play in the, in the advancement in the advancement of society in Tobago Dr. Wendy, you take that question today. That's right. We will follow up on it another time, but we need yeah. this right now. And then this is why I was asking you to come back because of this question and the church. Mm -hmm.